live? All righty. Hello there. How are you all doing out there in Facebook land or online land, wherever you are? Um, however you're viewing us or watching us today, uh, we just thank God that we're able to come into your homes and be a part of your Wednesday afternoon. Uh, it blesses us to be able to come and do this, our Bible study um, in this setting uh, so that we can uh, always be reaching out with uh, even in these difficult times where so much is disrupted, um, we're able to come before you and present our Bible study in a setting that is um, uh, familiar to many of you. So um, God bless you and we welcome you to uh, our noonday Bible study. We are having a great time um, considering under the circumstances teaching this lesson, uh, which is so appropriate for us in this season of our lives. Uh, we are dealing with this whole uh, coronavirus and COVID-19, and we continue to see how this is unfolding and its effects that continue to um, touch our world right now. Uh, but um, in the midst of it, we uh, believe that it is critical for us as believers to maintain our worship, to continue to be those who call on the name of the Lord and trust him, even in difficult times like these, even more so uh, that as so many things are being uh, upended and uh, chaotic around us, uh, we're able to, in this moment, I believe, speak a word of life into the hearers of those who will open their ears uh, to understand that even in this time, uh, God is speaking, God is moving, God is doing, uh, and he's calling us, uh, we believe, to an even fervent, more authentic and sincere worship. And so for us, we thought it would, uh, we were led um, to uh, represent a Bible study that we had dealt with uh, several weeks ago. Uh, that blessed our ministry. We wanted to um, widen our audience, particularly right now, as we are being a part of so many other people's lives through our telecast and what we like to call our love stream. Uh, and so here we are today to continue to teach on uh, this from the subject, uh, worship, don't worry. Uh, yes, worship, don't worry. Instead of worrying about the things that we can't control, uh, the things that are out of our hands, the things that are too big for us as individuals to deal with in this moment, not just dealing with specifically the coronavirus, but dealing with life in general, uh, the various issues that we're facing, whether it be our resources that are a bit strained and tightened, uh, whether it's the job losses that some of us are going through, whether it's family issues that some of us are having challenges with, whether it's our children and the rearing of our kids, or whether it's our health and navigating uh, difficult uh, moments with sickness, uh, we are coming today uh, to say and declare that instead of us worrying about those things uh, that are out of our hands, we want to put them in the hands that matter, and those are God's hands. And so we have been able to answer the call, we believe in this season, to be worshipers instead of worriers, uh, to be worshipers and praisers instead of people who are panicked, uh, to be able to, instead of live, living with anxiety, uh, to be able to give adoration unto God. And so uh, we invite you into this, our Bible study. This, uh, we believe on this particular outline, uh, will be the final principle that we want to deal with, uh, and it's going to bring all things around full circle. I can't wait to teach it. Uh, it's been blessing me to prepare these lessons each week, and uh, we're going to go in today and I believe have a great, great lesson on this afternoon. So if you will, uh, join with me in a word of prayer, uh, and then we will go right into today's lesson. Eternal God, loving and merciful and gracious that you are, we come before you so thankful for the blessing of your son, Jesus Christ, who even just a few days ago, we celebrate celebrated his resurrection. God, we thank you for our Savior, Jesus Christ. And then, God, we even thank you that we're able to be led by the Spirit. Yes, your Holy Spirit, even in this moment of prayer, God, guided and sustained by your power, God, in this moment to bless us to prepare a lesson that we believe, Father, uh, will be a uh, benefit to those who are able to hear. God, we pray in Jesus' name that for all of us who are on this broadcast and telecast, wherever we are, we pray, God, that you'd focus our thoughts and our minds 
even right now, God, that you'd bless us, uh, God, to have a curious and open mind uh, and a heart that's ready to receive a word from the Lord. God, we pray in Jesus' name that right now you would let any distraction subside, anything that might be uh, pulling on our attention. Father, we pray in Jesus' name that you'd bless us now to focus in on your word. God, that we might hear your voice and be encouraged and blessed and equipped even in this season, to be the believers, Christians, uh, and people of God that you would have us to be. God, so we do pray right now that you'd send your spirit. Bless us now to operate through uh, and in agreement with your spirit, that God, everything that takes place in this lesson would be pleasing in your sight, that God, we would truly be blessed by having been in this moment, and that Lord God, we will be better able to do what you called us to do as your people. So God, now speak to these, your people. It's in Jesus' name that we pray, and together, wherever we are, God's people said, amen. Amen. All right, so we're coming this morning, rather afternoon, uh, again, teaching from the subject uh, how to uh, worship and not to worry. Uh, to worship, don't worry. That's what we're declaring in the house of the Lord. And just for a bit of review, I'm going to go over some of the previous notes real quick just to bring everybody up to speed. And we're going to finish up with new information with that last principle that I believe will bless us. And I'll be out of your way this afternoon in just a little while. And so we came from this whole study, uh, which we have also affectionately kind of subtitled the ABCs of worship. Uh, we're dealing with the fundamentals of worship. This isn't a deep study. This isn't a heavy, deep dive study. I know for some folk who may be super heavy, this might be rudimentary and elementary to you, but I think it's important for us to, every now and then, uh, to go back and discover or rediscover and review those things, those principles that undergird, which are the underpinnings of why we do the things we do. Uh, because many of us who, who may be watching, some of us perhaps who are watching, uh, have probably been to church, you've seen church, you've been in worship services, you've uh, seen people do church, you've been involved in it yourself, uh, you've gone through orders of services and various different fellowships and faith traditions, and so you've come to know or have an idea or some concept of worship, and you probably even participated on some level um, in your own life. Uh, but it's important, I, I, as we said, to go back and understand why we do what, what we do and what really attitude and disposition, mindset, where our heart should be when we come to God in worship. And so that's what we've been doing over the last several weeks, really getting into the ABCs, the building blocks, the fundamentals of worship, why we worship, uh, what goes into worship, what type of attitude, disposition, mindset, and spiritual uh, framework we should have when we come to the Lord in worship. And so we came to it understanding that uh, these are times when people are worrying, where we could be a bit um, uncertain, where we are being shaken by bad news and what I call the doom and gloom of the news every day. Uh, and as I've just, let me put a pin there, be careful that I've said before, don't sit in front of your TV and watch the news all day. I just want to put that in your ear. It's really critical. I'm watching the news less and less these days. Uh, I get the bits I need, the facts that I need to hear, and then I move on to getting in God's word and spending time with my family and celebrating the goodness of God in so many other ways in my life. Uh, praying for our members, uh, thinking and, pray and, and, and envisioning and trying to find ways in which our ministry can meet the needs of this day. Uh, so uh, I would really encourage you to not let yourself be bogged down by uh, the daily doom and gloom that you're going to find on the news that goes over and over on a loop telling you how messed up things are. Uh, more useful would be for you to get that bit of information you need and then to go on about the rest of your day and enjoy your family. Uh, thank God. God for your health. Pray for those who are in need. Try to find ways in which you can be a blessing to others so that you're not focusing on the negativity of the moment so much. Uh, but as I just say that, uh, uh, again, just wanted to put a pin there and a public service announcement, if you will, uh, just to not get caught up in all of what's going on out there in the news, uh, but to stay focused on the things of God, get what you need, but keep it moving. So here we are in this moment, though, where folks are feeling a bit uncertain, and all of us are on a certain level, uh, and that is normal and expected, particularly in a worldwide pandemic that everybody's trying to work through, uh, many of which have been affected, some of us negatively, some of us worse than others. Some of us on the telecast may have even caught or have been infected with the disease. And so we're just, God, 
thanking God that he's blessing and keeping, uh, that he's watching over us uh, in these difficult times. Because you can find yourself worrying uh, so much that you just want to put your head under the covers. You want to sleep the day away. Uh, you want to uh, just hope it all passes you by. And it can be that way in other aspects of our life. Because when we're under attack or when we are going through terrible situations, and when our lives are difficult and we find ourselves being opposed or, or even attacked or in situations situations where our backs are up against the wall and we find ourselves in difficult places, uh, we can uh, find ourselves in a place where worry just overtakes us and depression overtakes us and our sense of helplessness in the moment uh, overtakes us. Uh, but again, here on the avenue and for all who have been connected with our ministry, you will know that we are declaring that instead of letting this world steal our joy and take our focus off of God, we are indeed a trusting and believing God all the more. And so here we are on this morning, afternoon rather, looking at this from the perspective of Second Chronicles chapter 20. Yes, King Jehoshaphat is in a situation where he is at war, uh, or rather, three armies have come against him in war. Uh, they have uh, put it they have put it so that they really want to destroy the children of Israel. Uh, they are there to wipe them out and to take them out. Uh, but we are again saying, no, not today. We would not let ourselves be overrun by uh, our situations. And wherein Jehoshaphat and the children of Israel could have ran for the hills, could have scattered and went their way. Uh, they knew that God had a promise for them. They knew that God had made uh, them some, uh, com some commitments to them. They knew that they were in covenant with God. And that meant that the Lord was going to watch over them and take care of them, even in this daunting moment in which they found themselves. That's a word for you today. God is going to keep you. God is going to watch over you you. God is going to cover you. God is going to protect you. God is going to sustain you in this moment, just like he did the children of Israel. And so here we are finding ourselves looking at this story of King Jehoshaphat. Here it is. It's one of my favorite stories. And uh, in Second Chronicles chapter 20, which is going to be the place where we're uh, primarily going to spend most of our time really just walking through this passage, I would encourage you to read all of Second Chronicles chapter 20 in particular because it's going to bless you with a whole new way of understanding how to deal with opposition, challenge, difficult places, hard spaces in your life. This will bless you if you receive it. So Second Chronicles chapter 20, King Jehoshaphat is in a situation where he's upset because three enemy nations are coming at him. They are there to destroy him and wipe him out. And so we are looking at how he deals with this moment. And instead of, again, running away, he shows us in how he moves through this moment step by step on how to deal with it and not worry about it, but to turn it over to the God, to, to God that we serve. Because as we've said before, uh, you have two choices when a situation comes upon you that is too hard for you to handle. You got two choices when you are under attack. You got two choices when you feel afraid. Those two choices, you can either worry about it or you can worship through it. Come on, somebody, and say amen. You can either panic or you can praise God. You can either be filled with anxiety or you can give adoration unto the Lord. And so we, again, have chosen to say no. We are going to worship God in this moment. We are not going to allow ourselves to get inundated with the fact that we are under attack. And it goes for us in this coronavirus moment, but it goes for us in our marriages and in our relationships with our children on the job, uh, in every other way in which we interact and live this life, there are moments when we face threat and opposition to the things that we desire of ourselves, of our God, uh, that we look for in the days to come. And if you worry yourself to death about it, then you'll never achieve what God said you could achieve in his name and by his grace. So we had been looking at several 
several ways in which to deal with it. Really, working through the ABCs uh, is what the, pr the beginning of the uh, principle uh, comes with. And so the first thing we said and what prepares a heart for worship uh, that allows us to come into the right mindset and understanding of everything we do when we come into the sanctuary or in the presence of God in worship is that we come to God from a place of knowing that we need him in our life. And so the first thing that we do is we ask God for help. Uh, when we worship, we're coming to the house of the Lord because we need help in some way in our life. We need God to speak to and deal with some area of our lives. And so we come to worship from this sense of firstly loving God and trusting him and wanting to express our love to him because of who he is and what he's done. Uh, and we'll get into that a little bit later. But we, we come to it because we know that God is a big God and the situations that we face are in his control and so what God asks us to do and desires of us and expects us when we come to him to worship is to firstly ask him for help that's what you firstly have to do and we see that that's what uh, Jehoshaphat did in the text second chronicles chapter 20 the bible says that the Moabites the Ammonites and the Mayunites they joined forces to make war on King Jehoshaphat. It's three nations uh, all coming against this brother at the same time. It goes on to say a huge force is on its way from behind the Dead Sea to fight you, and there's no time to waste. Uh, it says it this way in the New King James Version. It says it happened after this that the people of Moab with the people of Ammon and others with them besides the Ammonites came to battle against Jehoshaphat. It says then came then some came and told Jehoshaphat saying a great multitude is coming against you from beyond the sea from Syria and they are in Hazazon Tamar which is in Gedai and so uh, we see three armies coming against him now it would be bad enough as one if one was coming against him uh, but here you got three and I know somebody is saying like you are saying life can be that way too that that we may deal with one thing uh, and may feel like we could pr perhaps manage through that one moment but then another situation comes and then another situation comes on that and that's when you feel like oh my goodness I don't know what I'm going to do here and so this is where Jehoshaphat is and what you do when you're in a situation like that is you say hold up wait a minute before I start trying to figure out a plan and see how I can work through this thing the first thing I need to do is look to the hills from whence come with my help so that's where it is number one you got to ask God for some help. Uh, you got to get God involved in the situation. You got to stop thinking you can handle it by yourself and, uh, and trust that God will see you through the moment. And that's what Jehoshaphat does in that verse 3. Uh, the Bible says in verse 3 of 2 Chronicles chapter 20, it says, and Jehoshaphat feared and set himself to seek the Lord and proclaimed a fast throughout all Judea. And so we see right there that Jehoshaphat was afraid and being being afraid is a normal human reaction. No, don't let fear uh, take you under or cause you to turn back or run away or so engulf you that you find yourself depressed. But fear at the same time can motivate us to do the things that are necessary for all our lives. When we recognize the consequence or what could possibly happen to us or our frailty in the moment or our weakness in a certain situation. In fact, uh, when we recognize our weakness, the Bible tells us that in our weakness, God is made strong. And so when you ask for help, you are right there dispatching the support of a God, the help, the undergirding of a God who'll see you through the moment. So he asks in his, in his fear, he decides to ask the Lord what to do. All right. And so, again, we say fear is normal, but uh, he uses that fear to call on the Lord for help. And then verse number four, not only does he begin to ask God for help, but he enlists others. And like I said last week, this is the time when you need to be getting uh, instead of running around and figuring out who you can gossip with and who you can uh, meddle with and who you can cause trouble with and what kind of stuff you can do uh, that is uh, that you think will be helpful. What you need to be doing is finding yourself some prayer partners and some 
some folk to praise God with you who you can share scripture with and stand on the promises of God with in this moment because that's what's going to keep you and cover you and protect you in this very delicate time. So what Jehoshaphat does is he calls the whole country of Judah to unite in seeking God for help. They come from all the cities to pray unto God. It says it like this in the new uh, King James Version of the Bible. It says, uh, and Jehoshaphat feared, as we said, he set himself to seek the Lord, proclaimed a fast, critical time uh, throughout all of Judah. I don't have time to deal with fasting today, but this would be a good time as we came through Lent to continue some of those good habits that we may have started during the Lenten season. Verse 4 goes in to say, though, so Judah gathered together all together to ask from the Lord. And from all the cities of Judah, they came to seek the Lord. And so they come together uh, and they begin to pray unto God. The entire country, in fact, comes. And so first thing you got to do, if you're going to be a worshiper, a sincere, authentic worshiper, you got to come to it and invite God into your life. Invite God into your situation. Invite God into the circumstance. You got to ask God for help. Secondly, when we get to letter B, we firstly, we ask God for help. Secondly, we got to believe that God can handle the situation. Somebody say amen to that. Uh, you got to believe God can handle it because if you're praying uh, and you ask God to come in, then if it, it, it short circuits the whole moment if you don't believe God can handle it for you. So many times we give things to God, but we take them back because we are uncertain or our faith wavers and we are doubtful that God can do what he said he was going to do. And then we try to work through the situation and help God to a point where we end up doing more harm than good so what you want to do is ask God for help then you got to believe in your heart that God can handle your situation and so we see in verse 5 that uh, Jehoshaphat stands in the assembly of Judah and Jerusalem in the house of the Lord before the new court he's out front with the folk uh, and then the Bible tells us uh, that he begins to in verse 6 says uh, he begins to talk to God and remind God who he is and so we say our belief in God is based on two sub points or principles. We believe God can handle the situation and here's why. First reason is, is because we know who God is. God is awesome. God is powerful. God is righteous. God is mighty. God loves me. God has a plan for me. God is concerned about me. God loves me in ways that I could never understand. You got to begin to know who God is. Uh, and when you begin to declare who God is, even in your prayer life, uh, at the very top of your prayer before you ask God and before you begin to make supplication unto the Lord and petition the Lord for support and help in the various areas of your life or even intercede and step or stand in the gap for somebody else first thing you need to be doing is just acknowledging who God is God you are amazing God you are the alpha you are the omega you are the beginning you are the ending of all things you are the ancient of days you are the rose of Sharon God you are the wheel in the middle of a wheel you just begin to recite and declare who God is and I promise you when you get into your prayer life like that and you begin to declare who God is you'll start even feeling better about it because again the news the doom and gloom of a broadcast television will tell you how terrible everything is and how helpless we are and what we don't know and what we can't fix and we still don't have a vaccine and we can't find therapeutics and this disease is different from every other thing we've ever dealt with before it's unprecedented oh this is going to change everything and in so many ways that might be true but at the same time you can't let yourself hear that and make you lose and sap away from you and suck out of you any degree of faith the measure of faith that God has given you and so you can't let that happen and the way to do that is to number one believe God that, ha that uh, believe that God can handle the situation but you do that believe him because you know who God is you know his character you know the kind of God he is he loves you he's unconditionally loving you even right now so he's this in verse six he says he begins to remind God and himself he says are you not the God who's in heaven you rule over all the kingdoms of the nations and power and might are in your hands no one can withstand you he says oh Lord God of our fathers I'm reading it from another version says are you not God in heaven and do you not rule over all the kingdoms of the nations and in your hand is there not power and might so that no one is able to withstand 
man Jew. See, he's reminding himself and God that you are an awesome God. And I know and trust you and believe you can handle my situation because firstly, who you are. But then secondly, he's able to then trust and believe in God that he can handle the situation also because he knows who he is, but also because he's able to remember who God is, what he did in the past. And in verse number seven, he says this. He says, didn't you drive out those who lived in this land when your people arrived? God, we, we've already seen you do these things before. New King James Version says it this way. Are you not our God who drove out the inhabitants of this land before your people Israel and gave it to the descendants of Abraham, your friend forever? See, we can believe God because we know who he is and because we know what he's already done. God has already been blessing God. God, God has already been delivered. God has already set us free. God has already done so many powerful and God has already performed miracles in our lives. God has already got us out of trouble in the past. God has already shown us that he is God and God all by himself. God has already kept our people and foreparents through terrible situations. God has already defeated terrible leaders and overcome even those who were incapable or inept at leading people through terrible situations. God has already moved us through world wars and terrible moments and great depressions and great recessions. God has already done so many things. He's kept us through SARS. He's kept us through bird flu. He's kept us through uh, all the other Ebola. He's kept us through all these other viruses. This is a terrible moment. Do not get me wrong and do not take it for granted don't feel like this thing is just gonna take care of itself uh, but at the same time don't you forget that God has already been a deliverer in seasons past and so that's what Jehoshaphat does here he believes God can handle the situation because of who God is who our God is we know he's able he loves us he's with us he's powerful he's up to the situation it didn't catch him off guard God is able but not only that God God has already done it before and if he did it before he can and will do it again and even though I believe he's calling our world to recognize him and know him in a brand new way uh, in a more profound way that we won't put him on the back burner anymore in our life because he's giving everybody's attention at the same time we know he's done it before and he will do it in the days to come so we believe God to count the situation thirdly we confess our inadequacy this thing is too big for us to handle your situation with your family is too big for you to handle you and I you know you got to just say God I don't know how to deal with this uh, I can't handle it myself scientists and experts yeah they're trying their best to figure out this disease but it's it's it, they're inadequate God's gonna have to bless them with special revelation and insight and we're praying that God will do that praise God but 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 you got to confess in any situation and the heart of a worshiper recognizes that the power Power of my worship moves God in ways that my intellect and my hard work and my willpower cannot move things. My worship touches hearts that I can't touch, the wife that I can't reach, the husband that I can't relate to, the children who I can't break through with. My worship does that for me. I thank you, God. I bless you. No, Father, I don't understand my situation. This job has me overwhelmed. God, I don't know what the supervisor's looking for. I've been trying to do everything I can do to please my boss, but, in, in, but, but it's more more difficult but but what what I can do what is in my power to do is I can worship my God and right when I begin to worship the Lord God moves to my circumstances because I've made room for him because I've humbled myself and invited him into my circumstance. And so that's what the Bible tells us that Jehoshaphat does over in verse 12 of 2 Chronicles 20. He says, "We are powerless that's what he starts with we are powerless against this mighty army that is about to attack us we don't know what 
to do. And God moves according to our humility. The Bible tells us that pride repels God, but humility attracts God. Somebody say amen. The Bible says God resists the proud, but he gives grace to the humble. And so a worshiper is always an humble spirit. Anytime you see somebody arrogant and full of themselves and overconfident, feels like they, I mean, it's one thing to have holy boldness and yes, to walk with courage and absolutely. But when you're arrogant and you don't think you need any help and you can figure it out all by yourself, you got all the answers, you don't need any support. Uh, those are folk who don't know how to worship. In fact, next time when we're able to gather in church again, I'm praying by that time all the ungrateful and uh, arrogant people will have come to their senses by that moment but if you can just think back to when we gathered together and as you worship God and you'd find yourself standing on your feet or giving God glory and opening up your mouth and then you look over a, over a pew or two and you see somebody just sitting there twiddling through their thumbs and acting as if they have it all worked out that's somebody you need to be praying for because Obviously, they don't recognize that God is the one who is keeping us and watching over us. See, uh, only humble folk really know how to worship. Only people who know that God is a keeper and that he brought you through some things that you couldn't fix yourself and you knew that if it had not been for the Lord on your side you wouldn't be here. If it had not been for God blessing you, uh, you wouldn't have made it through school. If it hadn't have been God blessing you, you wouldn't have got the job because you messed up so many times along the way. You failed classes, you skipped classes, you missed classes, but somehow God still saw fit to make a way for you. You got a job you don't deserve. You got a home you didn't have credit for. You got a car you're driving that you didn't really couldn't afford God has been good to us you've got health even though you did everything to mess up your health and yet God has kept you see that humble spirit comes out in your worship worshipers recognize that if it hadn't been for the Lord I wouldn't be here I did everything I could to mess up God's plan for my life and he loved me so much that he still kept me and restored me and so you are able to recognize more plainly that I'm inadequate for the things that come before you before me but my God is well able to do it and so that's why I worship the way I do that's why I don't have time to come to church and play with church folk who are coming to look cute and pretty and show off outfits and try to speak to folk that just use it as a social, a social hour where they can catch up and chew the fat I don't have time for worshipers like that I don't have time for church folk like that upset I didn't speak to you on the way in I know you I like you thank you God bless you but when worshipers who know that God uh, is needed in their life and they can't handle the situation by themselves come to church please don't get upset if they don't speak to you or if they're not all up in your face uh, trying to get in uh, trying to snuggle up to you because some folk come to worship because they got to work some stuff out with God they got to invite God into their family they're leaving a hellish situation they're le leaving some kids who they can't control they're leaving a situation where they're fighting with their spouse they're leaving from a, a, a workplace that giving them a hard time and can't get enough hours to make the ends meet some folk are coming to worship because they know they're inadequate for the moment that they're in and they need God to show up in their situation and that's what God is calling all of us to recognize that we are inadequate and that should motivate our worship to give him our very best praise and our very best worship when we come into the house of the Lord I hope somebody's hearing me so you got to thoroughly confess your inadequacy unto God recognizing that apart from him you can do nothing we learned that in John 15 recognizing though that in God Philippians 4 and 13 says we can do all things through Christ who strengthens us yes you need to confess your inadequacy that informs and motivates true authentic and sincere worship now let's get on to letter D uh, where we dealt with that last week. I won't spend a lot of time here. I'm getting so uh, caught up in this awesome lesson that I'm almost reteaching it fully. I don't want to be doing that. So letter D is depend on God to save you. So you ask God for... Um, uh, ask God for help. You believe he can handle the situation based on who he is and what he's done. Thirdly, you confess your inadequacy, inadequacy, inadequacy rather that it's too big for you. Number four, you D, depend on God to save you. We see in verse 12, 12 and 13 of First Chronicles 20 that he says this. Jehoshaphat prayed, the Bible says. He said, we don't know what to do, but we are looking for your help. 
And the Bible says, all the men stood before the Lord with their little ones and their wives and their children. Uh, it says it this way in the New King James Version. Says, oh, our God, will you not judge them? For we have no power against this great multitude that is coming against us. Nor, here it is, do we know what to do. But our eyes, come on now, are upon you. You got to keep looking at God. Verse 13 then says, now all Judah with their little ones, their wives and their children stood before the Lord. Amen. So uh, you got to depend now on God to save you. God says, uh, uh, the Lord says uh, this to you. Don't be afraid or discouraged mm -hmm, because of this vast army. These things that are piling up against you for the battle is not yours, but it is God's. I love how God begins to say that. That's down in verse number 15, Second Chronicles chapter 20, verse 15. That's what Yolanda Adams sang to us those many years ago uh, when she blew that out the water uh, and said to us, the battle's not yours, it's the Lord's. And so the Bible says, uh, then the spirit of the Lord, verse 14, came upon Jehaziel, the son of Zechariah, the son of Benaiah, the son of Jael, the son of Mataniah, a Levite of the sons of Asaph in the midst of the assembly. And here it is, verse Verse 15 says, and he said, listen, all of you Judah and you inhabitants of Jerusalem and you King Jehoshaphat, thus says the Lord to you, do not be afraid nor dismayed because of this great multitude. Watch this for the battle. I love God's word is not yours, but God's. Wow. So I hope you're getting that. Depend on God to save you. You don't have to fuss. You don't have to fight. You don't have to tell anybody off. You don't have to go in or go off. Let God fight the battle. Put it in God's hands. I know it's rough right now, but you got to put this battle in God's hands. This coronavirus, we got to put that in God's hands. We've been trying to deal with it ourselves, messing the whole thing up. We got to put the thing. God is trying to get us to humble ourselves and depend on him. And I just believe if as the spirit of God moves across the world and as more people come to recognize the mighty hand of God, I believe we'll begin to make some real progress and move and pass this thing but God it might keep the heat on until we can understand and fully realize that it's him who we need to be depending on in this situation and so we depend on God to save us now letter E we dealt with this last week I loved it I was so into it uh, I won't spend as much time obviously as I did with it last week but letter E is express thanks to God in advance so right there before we even get through this thing before we uh, before the marriage gets better uh, before the children make the honor roll uh, before you get the promotion on the job you got to be expressing thanks to God in advance before you get well thank God in advance before you get delivered thank God in advance you got to express thanks to God in advance and that's what we see uh, uh, the Bible say uh, it tells us in second Chronicles chapter 20 that Jehoshaphat and uh, the children of Israel did. In the 21st verse of 2 Chronicles chapter 20, the Bible says, then the king chose men to be singers to the Lord. I loved this. This was so awesome teaching this last week. I, I, I want to do it again, but I, I can't do it. I need to finish up today and give you this last point. But, but the Bible said, then the king chose men to be singers to the Lord. He, he, he didn't get the army. He didn't get the ones with the big guns. He didn't get the folk who had the biggest spears and the horses, no tanks, none of that. He said, I need to praise singers to come up. I need folk who knew how to play instruments and sing and deal with music because we got to worship against this enemy that's in front of us. So he says, the king chose men to be singers to the Lord, to praise him. Uh, they hadn't fought nothing, nothing yet. No uh, arrows have been shot. No, none of that has taken place. But he says, uh, I, I'm getting them up front to praise him because he's holy and he's wonderful right there that's awesome uh they even praising him for what he could do uh for what they knew he was going to do or capable of doing they they weren't praising him because of what he was about to hook him up with they were just praising him because of who he was because he's holy and wonderful uh look at god and see when you have an attitude where you're not entitled where you don't feel like god has to hook you up but you just want to just thank god for who he is because you know that god has already done so much in your life that everything at this point 
is just extra. Uh, God saved you uh, when you were on your way to hell. God blessed you when you were no way deserving. God has allowed us to enjoy families that we shouldn't even have, children that we shouldn't have been able to bear, wives and husbands that are amazing to us. Nobody's perfect, but we're thankful for the folk God has blessed us to have in our lives, the family members that we know God has allowed us to enjoy and spend life with and share love with through the years. God has been so good to some of us. We got jobs that we didn't deserve. We were working jobs. We went to school for one thing and God blessed us with a job in a whole nother field. That was God. Some of us are living at pay scales that we never could have imagined. Others of us are making our way bit by bit the best we can knowing that if it hadn't been for the Lord you could be under a bridge or homeless or strung out somewhere. Some of us recognize you got a reason to worship God because the Lord has already been so good right now in this season. You're just thanking God because he woke you up this morning and he started you on your way. You're thankful when you get to a certain season of your life if you can just get from the bedroom to the kitchen without pain in your leg. I'm saying something good already to somebody. You're, 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 you're just lifting up your hands because you're grateful that the arthritis isn't so bad that, that you have to keep your arm down. Some of us have gone through some things already in our lives that God doesn't have to do anything else miraculous. We're just thanking him because he's holy and he's wonderful, which is what our text says. Is anybody hearing me? Go ahead and put amen in the comment section as you're watching us today. Let me say it from the New King James Version. It says, and when he had consulted with the people, he appointed those who should sing to the Lord and who should praise the beauty of his holiness as they went out before the army and were saying, praise the Lord for his mercy endures forever. Look at that. God, we're just stinking you because you're awesome. We, we, we're not worrying. We, there's a, they're, they're across the field, uh, three armies, they got way more folk than us. Uh, we could be afraid, and in fact, and a part of us is, but yet, God, we're going to worship you, and we're going to put it in your hands, and we're going to express thanks before any arrow is even shot or any signal or any trumpet is blown for us to storm the field of battle. We're going to praise you, God, even before so, before we even get going. And now, I know I'm preaching to some, or teaching to some folk who go to church. This is undergirding why you have praise and worship. This is why that moment of worship isn't some part that you just throw in, some extra stuff that you're okay missing. Uh, praise and worship isn't something that you just say, well, you know, I really just want to hear the word today, so if I show up and on time just to hear the message, then, then you know, I'll be good. No, 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 no. See, th that's not, that's, th see, you think that's extra, but that is actually what is preparing for your victory. When you lose yourself in praise and worship, when you let God get a hold of you to the point where you're crying and you're not worrying about who's next to you on your pew, when you come in opening your heart to God and saying, Lord, fill me. I need to ask you for help. I'm believing you can handle my situation. I'm confessing my inadequacy. I'm depending on you to handle the situation. I'm expressing my thanks in advance. God, I'm doing that because I'm trusting and believing this is an extra. In fact, this is what's paving the way to my victory. So I believe God is calling his house and believers to be even more fervent in our worship. I know uh, Y'all have been seeing those memes and those, uh, those, those clips on Facebook and other places of how it's going to be when we're able to come back in the, into the church uh, again. I'm believing it's going to be off the chain. But guess when that starts? That starts even right now around your kitchen table and in your kitchen while you're cooking, while you're cleaning your house, while you're disinfecting, while you're social distancing. You're learning how to praise God now because when we come back in the house of the Lord, it's going to be off the chain. It's going to be so powerful the anointing and the worship is going to be so profound that it's just going to move preachers won't even have to preach choirs won't even have to sing musicians may not even have to show up because the voices of God's people I believe are going to be raised so powerfully as we are able to assemble once again in the house of the Lord God is going to blow the roof off of our churches but guess when that starts that starts now with right where you are with nobody watching in your seat secret closet 
in your word, singing your songs, riding in your car, by yourself, lifting up hands unto God. We're folk in your house are looking at you like, what's wrong with you? You got on earphones. I'm walking through the park with earphones on. I'm praising the Lord through the woods. And my kids are looking at me like I've lost my mind. But I'm thanking God because he's awesome and he's worthy to be praised. And I'm expressing thanks to God in advance just for who he is. God has been so good to me and you. You ought to learn how to praise him just for who he is. And here it is. At the moment they began to sing and to praise mm -hmm, the Lord. This is verse 22. Caused the armies of Ammon, Moab, and Mount Seir to begin fighting among themselves and they destroyed each other. My people, please learn and give your heart over to worship because that is what wins the battles. That is the weapon of our warfare. We praise God. We don't fuss. We don't cuss. We don't fight. We don't pick fights. We don't tell people off. We praise God. We take it to the Lord in prayer. All the stuff we sing about and preach about, that's what we do. You don't have to set anybody straight. You worship God and pray love the Lord and express love to God he will fight your battles and the things you're worrying about before you even get there your enemy will turn itself turn against itself and destroy itself that's how awesome your God is he says you don't have to pick up a spear you don't have to pick up a, 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 a shield all you have to do is open up your mouth praise me and I will fight your enemies for you oh my goodness I could stay there again but let me finish this thing up. This is great. And this is going to put a bow on the whole thing. Last principle is letter F. This is good for you. You're going to need this. This is going to bless all of it because it brings all of this coronavirus, all the stuff you're dealing with in your house, all the issues you're dealing with with your health, all the issues that we're trying to work through in this moment. This brings it all together. Letter F. What you want to do uh, if you're going to be a real worshiper, a sincere worshiper, a true worshiper, uh, what you're going to need to be able to do is find the blessings in the bad. That's right. Find the blessings in the bad, the B-A-D. Find blessings in that bad situation, in other words. See, uh, see, God says, ask me for help. Like we said, believe I can help you. That's the second part. Confess your inadequacy. That's three. Four, depend on me to save you. E, the fifth one, express thanks in advance because I'm going to give you the victory. And, though, and then, uh, and then uh, so they started fighting among themselves. Uh, the enemies begin to kill each other. Uh, but watch this. Uh, uh, you know what the battlefield looks like after a battle is fought. Uh, just picture in your mind what uh, a battlefield looks like after, uh, in the aftermath of war. Uh, you perhaps have seen some war movies where uh, there was a great battle and people were defeated. And uh, obviously the battlefield is littered and strewn with, with bodies and wounded and those who are hurt, those who are, are, are groaning in pain, a bunch of dead bodies. And it looks bad. It looks terrible. It, it looks painful. And it is. It's gruesome in so many ways. And it's not a pretty sight at the end of a battle. I mean, a real battle. I mean, I mean, we're not talking about some video game. Like a real battle where actually you see flesh torn off of bone, where you see uh, I don't want to get too graphic, but it can be quite nasty if you imagine what war can look like. So there are bodies strewn all around and it's bad. But here it is. God says, I want you to find the blessing even in the bad because I've got some stuff I want to give you that's out there on that battlefield. Now you can't see it because all you can see is how bad the situation looks. Oh my God, this is so good. I hope you are getting this revelation. Uh, there's some stuff I want to give you. Uh, you can't see it right away because all you see is the dead bodies and the groaning and the pain and the difficulty and the hurt and the challenge and the struggle and the aftermath of all that has transpired here. I know you can't see it, but God is telling us there's some good stuff even in this bad situation. And so God says, yeah, I want you to find the blessing mm -hmm, in the bad because 
I've got some stuff that I want to give you that's out there on that battlefield. There are some spoils of war, mm -mm -mm. some plunder, some stuff left over. That's that's it's it's you can't say it right away. It's 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 mixed in with some blood and some pain and some struggle and some tears and some hurt. Oh God, I'm teaching good today. Uh, somebody needs to know that God has some good stuff even in the midst of what you see or sense is only all bad. I know, yeah, it is some bad stuff, but, but God is trying to send us a revelation that there's some good stuff even in, I see good stuff in the bad. I, I, I caught a little bit of the news before I, I left the house, and, but in as tragic as people uh, are going through the struggles of their life, I'm still sorry. I just saw a brother in New Jersey uh, who said he was all his tenants weren't going to have to pay rent for the past three months or so. See, that's see that's a blessing in a bad situation. You got health care frontline workers who are giving their all to save lives and working their fingers to the bone and people are sensing a new surge of love and compassion and commitment and concern for one another like never ever before that's a blessing even in the bad right now yes businesses are closed right now People have lost jobs, but I believe somebody right now is figuring out God is sending you a revelation for a new business and a new product and a new technology and something and some blessings are going to come out of this bad situation. Our churches at first especially were rocking and reeling. How are we going to make it? How the resources are going to be there? Folk aren't coming. What are we going to do? How do we have Bible study? How do we have services? How do we hold our meetings? The whole game changed. But guess what? I see so much ingenuity, so much creativity, so many unique approaches to ministry, so many people doing things they never thought they could or would or should even do. But now God is expanding. And guess what? But the word said that he would use us to spread the gospel all over the world. And maybe just now, one of the blessings in this bad situation is that the word of God, we have taken over Facebook. Facebook about to be a Christian uh, home uh, a ministry. <laughs> we about to have a Facebook ministry. We taking over Instagram. We taking over Twitter because God is putting the word out in every way possible. There are blessings in the bad. Oh God, help me teach this thing. Let me finish up. I got to get out your way, but I'm hoping you're getting what I'm saying. And so, and so God says there are some spoils, some splendor, some, some good stuff left. And so the Bible says that when the army of Judah arrived at the lookout point in the wilderness, there were dead bodies laying on the ground as far as they could see. Now that's bad. It goes on though to say that King Jehoshaphat and his men went out to gather the plunder. A plunder, that's the spoils of war, uh, to pick up the good stuff. And here it is, they found, watch this, vast amounts of equipment <laughs> and clothing, wow, and other valuables. Don't you love God's word? More than they could, they couldn't even carry all of the good stuff away in fact there was so much plunder the bible says it took them three days oh my goodness just to carry it off i'm teaching good right now somebody's getting this god wants to bless your life so much so that you can't even handle all that god is going to do in your life i know it looks tragic right now i know you suffered some loss you you've, you've gone through some pain you you've been in a battle you've got some wounds and some scars but trust me my sister trust me my dear brother God is going to bring some good out of that bad situation out of that thing you thought was uh, was terrible and no good there God says it's some good stuff even in the midst of your situation I hope y'all are getting this today that's second chronicles chapter 20 verse number 24 through 26 let me read it from the new king james version it says it this way it says so when Judah came to a place overlooking the wilderness they looked toward the multitude and there were dead bodies fallen on the earth it said no one had escaped 
Verse 25 says, when Jehoshaphat and his people came to take away their spoil, that's the good stuff. They found among them an abundance, an an abundance. Somebody just say abundance. Somebody just tweet abundance. Just put hashtag abundance on everything you're dealing with today and watch God do some awesome things in your life. And they found among them an abundance of valuables on the dead bodies. Watch this. And precious jewelry. Yeah, some good stuff, which they stripped off for themselves more than they could carry and they were three days gathering the spoil because there was so much I'm gonna have to preach this thing one day I'm just teaching through it right now but but I I I feel a preach coming on because somebody needs to understand you got to find the blessings in the bad of this situation so notice now the results of choosing worship over worry if you got problems in your life this week You say, I'm going to do these things instead of worry. You need to be saying, I'm going to ask God for help. You need to be saying, I'm going to believe he can handle it. I'm going to confess my inadequacy. I'm going to depend on him to save me. I'm going to express my thanks in advance, and I'm going to find the blessings in the bad. I'm going to find it. I'm going to, and they might need, they probably had to turn over some stuff. They had to use some effort to get to it, but, but it was there. And so I'm telling you, you may have to look for it. You may have to search for it. But God promises you that even amongst the dead, even amongst dead situations, even amongst blood, even amongst terrible things there are blessings in the bad situation somebody needs to be saying amen to what I'm teaching you on today because God says here's what happens when I'm allowed to solve your problems if you'll let me solve your problems if you'll let me if you will ask me for help if you'll believe I can handle it if you'll stop thinking you're so great and confess your inadequacy if you'll now depend on me and And let me fight the battle. And if you'll praise me in advance and express your thanks, I will allow such destruction to come to your enemies that you will then, amongst the things that look bad, you will find blessings in those moments. God says, I can bless you if you'll let me come into your situation. So if you do these things, mm -hmm, uh, the Bible says, God will, if you allow God to solve your problems, more blessings will come that you can even handle. That's what the scripture says. More blessing than you can possibly handle. Took them three days to get all the blessings. The Hebrew word is the word baraka. Baraka means blessing. They said we're going to just name, they even named the place of it. (laughs) <laughs> and when we come out of coronavirus, I think we need to rename some stuff. They renamed that thing. They call it the Valley of Baraka, meaning the Valley of Blessings, because there's so much blessing that we don't only we don't uh, we not only didn't have to fight the battle. Look at that. But we, we're going home richer. We're going home wealthy. We're going home blessed. We're going home with abundance. I'm telling you, I'm saying on the other side of this this whole moment we're gonna come out better we're gonna come out stronger we're gonna come out a better church you're gonna come out a stronger family me and my family walking through the park every day we weren't doing that before we're gonna come out a stronger family I got my whole family doing devotionals and we're praying together I'm telling you we weren't doing some of that before because life got so busy and hectic one's going this way one's going the other one's going to school one's going to another school and we weren't able to gather like we were I'm telling you families are going to come out stronger. Churches are going to come out stronger. Preachers are going to come out stronger. Some of us preachers, we we working so hard trying to do the work of the church. It was has been so uh, some of us hadn't don't even have time to get in the word and study and pray and meditate and just seek God's face and envision ministry. God is blessing us now that we're in our home studies. He's saying, get on your knees and pray more. Start fasting like you used to, like you should have been doing all along. I'm telling you, you're going to have a better pastor after this. We're going to have better, stronger members after this. We're going to have stronger churches, stronger schools, stronger teachers, stronger students. Everything on the other side of this is going to be stronger and better. We're believing God for that. There are blessings in bad situations. Please hear me, my brothers and sisters, that God is going to bless us in this powerful way. And so that's what we want to leave you with today. Amen. That God is going to allow us to find blessings 
even in this bad situation. Uh, we thank God for you watching on the telecast today. And we pray that you will go away from this being encouraged to know that if you worship as God desires, as King Jehoshaphat and the children of Israel laid out for us by example, if you will begin to know how to praise God in this moment and to acknowledge him, to ask him for help, to believe he can handle it, to confess your inadequacy, to depend on him, to express your thanks in advance and to find blessings in the bad, you will know that God is going to bring you through better and stronger. So be encouraged, my brothers and sisters. Have a wonderful rest of your afternoon. I'm going to pray with you. Amen. And then we're going to let you go on and enjoy the rest of this afternoon afternoon eternal God we love you we bless you we give you praise God we're so appreciative that uh, we believe you heard our prayer and our, our our this moment God that Lord you're covering us even in this time and God we just acknowledge that you're an awesome God and you're well able to deal with all that's taking place in this season of our lives. God, we come today again thankful that you've blessed us to know, God, that it is, is, it is critical for us not to worry, but it is absolutely necessary for us to worship. And so God, bless us to receive this lesson on today and walk in the truth of, this, of your word that, Lord God, we will know that the battle is not ours, but it's yours. And if we trust you, we'll come out victorious. We love you, God, and thank you. It's in Jesus' name that we pray, and we say amen. My dear brothers and my sisters, we are out of here. You have a wonderful rest of your day. We will see you next time, signing off from the Freedom Church for a new generation. That's the Penn Ave AME Zion Church, where we're set free to serve God, unleashed to change the world. Have a wonderful rest of your day. God bless.